Hi everybody. I wanted to come on and show you guys what I was up to this past weekend. Uh, I put a video out about dyeing paper with um, bleeding art tissue and so I did that for a good bit of a day on Thursday. And here's just some of the papers from that. I love that it goes through on both sides. Then I watched a video from the paper outpost. She used sprinkles, cake sprinkles, to do dyeing on her papers. And I did that with some, these are just red. Um, it left sort of a residue of the sugar, so I'm not sure how that's gonna work, but I could possibly salvage some of it or scrape the rest of that off. Um, but that one was the, just the plain red, and then I had some disc type sprinkles. I thought that turned out really neat. Um, and then I, these are the little, um, I think they're called Jimmies. They're more long and they're very, very muted, but it's sort of funfetti like. And then this is just some, this is actually a Christmas blend of sprinkles that I had, but I thought. The lime green turned sort of yellow, and this reminds me of what the top of a Pop-Tart looks like, so I thought that was cool. And here's some more jimmies. So that was Thursday. Uh, also, the same day, I used some homemade alcohol inks and sprayed some vellum. Uh, oh, by the way, the art tissue will work for two applications. So this is for the, this is the, First application and then once the tissue paper dried I did it again and it it did it a little more muted so after you do it once do not throw it away you can use them again uh, and then here's just a blue and the second time I did it the colors sort of bled together better it looks almost tie-dye so I thought that was neat instead of looking so geometric so these are all second applications. This is some more of the alcohol ink before I got it pigmented enough. Um, and then after I added a sufficient amount of blue. So that was Thursday. And then Friday, I spent the entire day Kool-Aid and tea dyeing paper. So as you can see, I have pretty much every color um, notebook paper and copy paper. Um, this is black cherry Kool-Aid. This was actually orange Kool-Aid, but I added a little bit of red food coloring so because I wanted it to be more of a coral, and I thought it turned out perfect. And this is yellow, and this is purple, and this is, of course, tea. So I did that and then ironed them on Saturday. That is a great way to keep warm on cold days is to away dye paper and dry them in the oven and then iron them. Uh, and then Saturday morning, my husband and I went to a thrift store nearby that we love going to. We just happened to see they were having a 50% off everything sale. So we went and checked it out and I wanted to share with you guys what we found. First of all, uh, they had a big bin of sewing notions. So there were some appliques. They're so cute. Um, strawberry, I can't turn down anything strawberry. There was a lot of rickrack. I have not seen rickrack this small anywhere in a long time. So I just chose an assortment of colors of these. If anybody has any tips on how to get these Sharpie marks off, of the plastic, I would, that would be great. Um, not that I'm not going to use these, but just in case I decide to not unwrap one of them, I'd love to have that taken off. And this was also in there. I'm not even sure how much it was because there was no price, but this appears to be hand done tatting, which my great grandmother did. So whenever I see this, I snatch it up because I know I mean, it's just exquisitely intricate. I don't know if you can see. Oh my goodness. So yes, uh, I, got, I got those out of that bin. And then I got this tea towel. 
I'm not sure whether or not I'm going to keep it and use it because I am a sucker for quirky and cute tea towels or if I'm going to use it for journals, covers or something. Can't decide. Love the colors though. Love, love it. Got a pack of very long aged, edged, ruled in index cards. I'm, I think these are probably five by seven. Got a few books. Uh, this is one of the Dover coloring books. This was a wildflower one. And I think only one page was colored, yeah. So, could not pass that up. I got both of these little um, former school library books from the early 1950s. So, yeah, I could not pass these up as well. I mainly got them for the covers, but I will, of course, read through them before turning them into journals. I got this for the cover alone, but inside there are some pretty cool illustrations too that I'll be able to cut out and use. Another school library book. This is just a history book. And I mainly got this for the maps. It's really beautiful. Like I need another children's dictionary, but I I got this one just because it's probably the most elementary one that I have. That's suited for much younger grades. And I love that almost all of the words have an illustration with them. I have no idea who this lady is. I don't know if she writes music or sings, but this is just a hardbound book of music for children with some super cute illustrations. And I think they just go through, it just goes through the seasons and holidays through the year. Yeah, I can't pass these up either. These Better Homes and Gardens books. Uh, I think I have a version of this from another year, but this is from the late 70s, I think. So these, these pages that are all black and white are great for making pockets uh, out of, or envelopes. But then you've got these really groovy images that you can use in a 70s journal or a sewing journal. I found three coloring books and activity books. Richard Scary can never pass their books up either. My children loved Busy Town books and television show when they were younger. This one was just a sort of extra practice book. I remember my sister using these. And it's very, to me, I thought it was rare that the inside was colored. I thought normally these were mainly black and white, so I had to grab this as well. And this one, I don't think I'll use for a journal. Honestly, I kind of want to do it myself. I grew up with Rainbow Bright, and <laughs> this was an unused paint with water. Um, so, yeah. Love it. Love it, love it. Do you guys remember when Walmart stickers were on everything and they were lime green? I do. I found two Peter Rabbit books. This is just postcards. These are very sturdy chipboard. They're so cute. They will be perfect for Easter and spring journals. Love it. Here's a Valentine over here. And this is a sticker book. This is the, the type of, with the clear stickers that you can reuse on the on the scenes. Um, loved these as a kid as well. Sort of like color forms, but then it has the story as well. So yeah, so fun. 
Okay, I, some of the stuff now, um, I don't really know what it is. It got to the point where I had been there so long where I just had to say, you know what? If it's a good price, I'm just gonna grab it and I'm not gonna open everything because I could tell sort of from the outside what some of these things were. This looks like some sort of postalette type foldable stationery. Um, yeah, I guess that's what it is. It's just a, and I don't think this Macy's price tag is for this. I bet it was just in this bag. But that looked so 60s, I could not leave it behind. I loved it. So cute. These will be great. Uh, this big pack of stickers, I could tell they were old. And by old, I mean 80s. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just, I love grab bags. I can't pass those up either, so... 1982 Hallmark. Uh, I don't know whether or not these will stick anymore, but they are, they appear to be unopened. Some of them do. This one's been used. Sandy Lion. So cute. I remember this brand. And these little stapled packs. Hallmark. Denison flower seals. These have been used heavily. Hallmark. 1990. Uh, 82. Most of these appear to be 82. I wonder if these were a teacher's or a piano teacher. Yeah, that looks like a teacher's. 1985. Kmart. Those are so cute. These appear to be Mrs. Grossman's. Yep. Grossman's. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Oh my goodness, I loved these. They were so expensive, but I remember just going and just staring at the wall of the rolls of these and begging my mom for just one square foot. <laughs> Wildlife Fund. Birthday. These look like they at, were scented at one time. Hmm. This one's been open, I think. Yep. There's no date on these. Oh, yes, there is. 1989. More seals. Birthday. Hats. So cute. few more loose sticker packs that were not with those. Um, these are Hallmark 1989. They look like quilt squares. 1984. That looks like a grocery store label. Teddy bears 1984. 1978. I mean, for 1978, that seems like that was kind of pricey. I don't know. Because you can buy stickers for that price now. 1984. So cute. And Valentine. No date. Nope. Okay, there was this little pack of recipe cards. I don't know if they're all the same. Probably it is. 
but yes, I can't pass up recipe cards as well. And honestly, it's very rare to find them, <laughs> for me anyway. <clears throat> this is a little um, stationery pad with Mickey and Minnie, 1983. So cute. Okay, that is all of the junk journal things from this thrift store, but there were three more items that I found that were not junk journal that I bought. Uh, this is a cruel kit. I love doing embroidery, cross stitch, and um, you know, regular embroidery, but I have never tried cruel. So I'm excited about this one. This one is very 70s. It's called a uh, bell pull. So it's one of the long, narrow. And I'm assuming everything's in here. I saw that the fabric was in here and the yarn is still tied in knots. So it's okay if the needle is not here. I just, for $1.50, I could not leave it there. Uh, this is a one of the Hallmark cardboard centerpieces unopened. Super neat. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Again, there's no way to get that off, but oh well. And then this is a pack of iron on transfers and things for embroidery. I still have so many tea towels I bought that I have not embroidered yet, so maybe some of these can be. Transfer pencils, those were always needed. The fruits by Aunt Martha's. Fruits and vegetables. Carnations. Ooh, daffodils. Monograms, American Indian, Flower of the Month. I love these, love these, love these. This is just like a, yeah, that's huge. That might just become a page in a journal. Cool. And then I went to two more stores nearby. One is an antique store and one is a general merchandise slash gift store. And there, I finally bought myself a brayer and a gel press. So I've been sort of doing my own version of braying using things that I had around the house. So now I have an actual brayer. And I have not tried this yet, ever, any form of it. So I'm very excited about this. The lady who worked at the shop was very kind to show me some actual examples of tags that she had made, and it sold me on it. So, excited about that. And then at the antique store, the store was a former drugstore. So, when the drugstore closed, the antique store owner acquired all of the greeting cards that had not sold. The store probably closed in the early 70s, I'm guessing. Uh, so she sells these packs of greeting cards for a dollar for five. So I just went ahead and grabbed, I'd already grabbed handfuls earlier last year, but I grabbed more on Saturday when I was there. Honestly, I was surprised that she still had some. But these are just little gift enclosures. I just love the fonts inside of these old green cards. So cute. Oh my goodness. Love it. And then there's a variety of other cards. There's a granddaughter's birthday. Birthday. This has foil. Um, 
another. These have, these must be mother. Let's see some pins. This looks some, very feminine, more mother. Secret Pal. These look a little masculine. Birthday. Children birthday. And baby. Precious. So yeah, that was my big haul from the weekend. I'm super excited about everything found some pretty great deals and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.